Hello Vinyl Community, this is Randy. Back today with another video. I'm uh, going to show you some uh, records and CDs today that I've picked up in the past uh, couple weeks. So, uh, first CD I have to show you is this Dave's Pick, number 36. This is the uh, fourth volume in uh, this subscription series. You get four CDs a year of, of Dave's Picks. Um, ordered directly from uh, Grateful Dead, so um, this is number 36, it's the fourth one this year. This is actually uh, two nights, this is actually two shows, which is a little bit different for the Dave's Pick series. It's usually just one show and maybe a, a couple songs from another night, but this is the two entire shows from Hartford, Connecticut on March 26 and March 27, 1987. So. Uh, these were important shows for Grateful Dead tape archivist uh, David Lemieux because this were the first Grateful Dead shows that he ever went to. Uh, he was a kid, I think, like uh, 15 or 16. He tells the whole uh, story in this booklet here. He lived in Canada and had been collecting uh, Grateful Dead tapes for a while and was waiting for the show to be close. And uh, he actually, his mother agreed to drive him and a friend down there to the show in Connecticut. So he got to go to his very first show uh, there in Connecticut. And I can't really tell from this if he went to both shows or just the first night. I assume if they went all the way down there, he probably went to both shows. So, yeah, two shows here. This interesting cover. I mean, I think those are supposed to kind of look like whales there coming into Hartford. There's people getting ready for the show there at the Metro Center, I guess, was where they play. Here's, actually, here's the whole thing folds out there um, so yeah two complete shows uh, no repeated songs and uh, it all sounds great this is the version of the dead with um, Brent Midland playing Oregon so no Donna Jean uh, no Keith Godshaw no Pig Pen other than that it's the core members of the band I got some uh, I've been doing some uh, a little bit of, I don't know if you call it research or uh, just uh, going back and listening to some early uh, bebop, so uh, a little bit of Thelonious Monk, some stuff that I already had. And then I uh, vendor on uh, Discogs, I got three <coughs> Dizzy Gillespie CDs. So I just got these a couple days ago and haven't had a chance to listen to them too thoroughly yet. <clears throat> Gonna listen to them some more, but uh, here's the first one. This is called Sitting In, and this one was recorded in 19. Uh, 57 at WR Studio, WOR Studios in, in New York. So uh, on this one, Dizzy is playing with Stan Getz, Paul Gonzalez, and Coleman Hawkins on tenor sax. Wayne Kelly's on piano, uh, Wendell Marshall on bass, and JC Hurd on drums. So uh, there's just four tracks on here. There's some uh, ballads. So there's some of the uh, bebop, which is just really fast, but then there's also some ballads, too. So it's kind of the same for all these. There's another uh, Dizzy, uh, Dizzy Gillespie that I got. This one's called the Modern Jazz Sextet. On this one, he's playing with uh, <coughs> John Lewis and uh, Percy Heath from the Modern Jazz Quartet. Added on to this is Sonny Stitt playing alto sax. And... Um, who else plays on this? Uh, yeah, Charlie Perslip on drums. So, um, yeah, this one is recorded also in 1957, uh, I believe, and uh, on this cool Norgrand Records uh, label. I think Norgrand was uh, Norman Grant's label before Verve, or maybe before Impulse, or yeah, Norman Grant's. Uh, yeah, so it comes with this booklet that tells all about it. it has the liner notes from the here's the original cover and here's what the original liner notes look like on the back but there's a little bit bigger here and the rest of it so uh yeah dizzy gillespie i mean it's uh, uh once again it has the uh the bebop song where they're just playing really fast 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 and then uh there's some uh ballads on there too so here is one that was recorded live dizzy gillespie and his big band in concert in um, uh, Pasadena, California in 
seven, I believe. So yeah, this is a, a live one. Lots of notes in here. I haven't listened to this one all the way yet, through yet. I've just listened to part of it. Uh, yeah, this live music, I mean, it's just loud. Uh, yeah, I mean, there may be some ballads on here, but the part I've heard so far is just really loud and fast. And so, um, yeah, it's cool. And that's, uh, the second song is uh, uh, Olya Ku. Uh, sort of a novelty type song, I think, that Dizzy did back then. So, we listened to all three of these some more, sort of just to uh, lay some groundwork for the jazz that came later. That vendor included a couple other uh, CDs in the uh, package. So, this is a mini CD uh, by Echo Transmission. So, this is what we're hearing right now. This is electronic music, and uh, I looked it up on Discogs, and this is called Vaporwave. So, yeah, my first Vaporwave, so that's very cool. I didn't have any Vaporwave before. I've heard uh, Mike jam on vinyl talk about Vaporwave quite a bit, and I think a couple other uh, uh, VC members have discussed it some too. So, yeah, this is really pleasant. I've really been enjoying this one. So, it's just one long track, about 18 minutes, but <clears throat> there's actually about three or four songs in here, and there's some vocals. Even though I can't understand the words, I'm not even positive they're really singing words, but it all sounds really excellent. Uh, that vendor also included this CD, which is a compilation. This is a sub-pop compilation, so this is sort of a mar on the uh, cover there, though. But I'm not sure if you can see, there is a face on there. And, uh, yeah, this guy, I guess, was a photographer. Uh, up there in Seattle when Sub Pop was first getting started. So he was there at the beginning and he, you know, sort of tells some s stories here about when Sub Pop was getting started and helping to pack up records and, and take the band members to the uh, airport and stuff like that. So he was really there at the beginning of Sub Pop. So you can see the songs on here. I think the early Sub Pop bands are best known or on here. So it was a really cool compilation. I, uh, I didn't have any of this except, well, I had Nirvana. Uh, Negative Creep on that Bleach album, but uh, other than that, I don't think I had uh, any of these songs. So, yeah, this is really cool. Uh, the only minor drawback to this one is it's also just one long track. So it's like 26 minutes, so, you know, you have to just start at the beginning and hear the songs in order. If you want to hear one of the songs that's later on, you have to just fast forward to it and look for it. So, it's um, a minor, minor inconvenience there. Also included this blue CD, so yeah, I got a lot of stuff there. Uh, this is a soundtrack from a Martin Scorsese film called The Blues, and uh, so this is like a primer in blues, which is uh, really just what I need because I really don't have any blues. I've been watching The Blues Guy for a couple years, and I feel like I know all these people, but I don't really have their music, so uh, <clears throat> Helen Wolf is on here, Muddy Waters. Uh, you know, really, I think all the uh, blues people you would think of, Sunhouse, Robert Johnson. So, yeah, this is really cool. It ends uh, with a song uh, with Manish Boy, but it's actually done by uh, Chuck D and the Electric Mudcats. So, uh, yeah, I guess an update on the blues there with Chuck D from Public Enemy doing the vocal part. So, yeah, this is really cool. Really cool compilation. It's very good for me because uh, a really good introduction to the blues. So, getting a little bit of a, a little bit of blues to listen to now. I got some records. Ordered this Sonic Boom record from Bandcamp. I uh, it was sort of a pre-order. They were uh, doing a second pressing. So this is the second pressing of this album from Bandcamp. And uh, I saw Sam show this. The Vinyl Douche showed this. A while back, must have been two or three months ago, three or four months ago, and um, sounded really good. I've seen, I think, a couple other people show it since then. So um, I downloaded it from Bandcamp as soon as I got it. So I've been listening to it for a couple of months, and uh, I tell you, this is one example of uh, listening to the vinyl is, is really just so much better than listening to that uh, MP3 through my iPod. So it just makes a major difference in the sound. So um, Here's sort of a philosophy of life from the guy. And uh, this is a guy who used to be in uh, Spaceman 3. So, uh, 
I guess he is working here with uh, Panda Bear from Animal Collective, uh, the guys from MGMT, and actually some other people. He lists all kinds of people here. These uh, thanking so. Yeah, this is a lot of synthesizers and electronic music, and uh, sounds really good. There uh, has a lot of words too, so the lyrics are included here. Yeah, so I'm enjoying this one. Uh, some of the words get to be a little bit repetitive on this, like spinning coins and uh, wishing on clovers, or uh, well, maybe on a summer's day. Uh, but for the most part, I'd say it's really good. I've really been enjoying this one, so yeah, very good uh, chill type music. So yeah, that, in addition to the inner sleeve, it came with this poster. It's pretty much like the cover, I think. So I'm good. Yeah, I'm glad to get that one. Got this album called uh, "The Catwalk" by Donald Byrd. This is a Blue Note album that was released. Uh, that was recorded on uh, May 2nd, 1961, and was released, uh, I think, in 1962 or even 1961. The interesting thing about this is this was recorded uh, just two weeks after Donald Byrd recorded uh, the album, uh, another album uh, that was released was not released until 1979. That was Chant, which was released as a, a tone poet record. Uh, in the past couple months, and I showed that one in a previous video. So, this one recorded a couple weeks after Chant. Chant wasn't released until '79. This was released in '62. So, obviously, Blue Note or Donald Bird or somebody must have been happier with this one at that time, anyway. It's completely different people, except for Pepper Adams plays baritone sax along with Donald Bird on both of these albums. I think they were sort of a team there in the '50s and '60s. The other people playing on this are Duke Pearson on piano, Layman Jackson on bass, and Philly Joe Jones on drums. So, uh, the very first song on this album is one that's written by Duke Pearson. Three of the songs on here are written by Duke Pearson. I'm a big Duke Pearson fan. First song on here is called uh, Say You're Mine. Uh, he also has written um, Duke's Mixture and Hello Bright Sunflower. So, Hello Bright Sunflower, the last song on the album, really upbeat, cheerful song. Really good album. Really like this one a lot. Turns out this is a bootleg. Uh, this is on a label called Alternative Fox. And uh, I got home with it and looked it up on Discogs. And Alternative Fox is listed as a bootleg label. So it doesn't say on that cover Blue Note anywhere. Here's what the label label's really cool looking label. Um, it sounds fantastic. I mean, I have no idea what the source was. Probably a CD or well, who knows? Maybe they got the original tapes. I don't know. But either way, it sounds great, so I was glad to get this one. Yeah, that song on there uh, by Duke Pearson that I mentioned called Say Your Mind is actually also on this Duke Pearson album. So this was recorded in, uh, gosh, I think, uh, 19, September 11, 1968. So, uh, he does that song, Say Your Mind, on here too. Uh, and he's written uh, three other songs on this album. This is a fantastic album. This has Jay Dodgen on flute and alto flute. And then you can see here on the cover, featuring uh, Bobby Hutcherson. So, uh, to me, you know, Bobby Hutcherson plays on every song, and it almost sounds like a Bobby Hutcherson album because he, he does most of the leads. It sounds great. Well, actually, several of the songs have the flute on it, too. So, flute is the only horn on here, and it just sounds fantastic. To me, the flute gives it sort of that exotic sound, sort of like exotica, like jungle music or something like that. So, of course, this also has uh, Victor Pantojo on conga and Potato Valdez on Congo and Guiro. And uh, Mickey Roker on drums, Bob Cranshaw on bass, Al Gaffa on guitar, Sam Brown on guitar. So, uh, yeah, this is actually a uh, Blue Note Tone Poet release, but there's no gatefold sleeve, so uh, I guess they dropped that. And, uh, yeah, Duke Pearson, The Phantom. Love that album cover, dude. What a great album cover. The Duke Pearson, one of my favorites. I was really, 
really glad to get this one. Really like this record a lot. Yeah. yeah this is on the standard Blue Note label. I got a couple of Maxine Sullivan albums. I'm a big Maxine Sullivan uh, fan. One of my first time tested records was Maxine Sullivan sings the music of Julie Stein. Here, she's playing with Bob Wilbur. Closest pages in a book is the song and the name of the album. Bob Wilbur is playing a soprano saxophone there. I'm, I'm used to seeing a soprano sax that is a straight horn and almost looks like a clarinet like John Coltrane has on the cover of My Favorite Things. But this one has the uh, curve and the bell in it. So, uh, yeah, this was recorded in uh, 1969. And uh, yeah, I just love Maxine, so... Um, she sounds great on this, and Bob Wilbur sounds good too. He's the only horn on here. Um, so uh, the other uh, personnel on this are uh, Bernie Lighton on piano, George DeVivier on bass. So always glad to hear of George DeVivier and G Gus Johnson on drums. So yeah, um, well the songs on here. These are all. I mean, pretty much. I think you would call them. Standard songs, uh, Gone with the Wind, Rockin' in Rhythm, Darn That Dream, beautiful version of that. Her greatest uh, hit song was called Lock Lomond, uh, which is on here. So, Maxine, a singer from the uh, certain the late 30s. Really one of my favorites. This is on Monmouth Evergreen label, which is a label I was not familiar with, but excellent sounding record and I uh, forgot to show you the gatefold or well, maybe I should gatefold sleeve here so really good to get that uh, read all about how they came together to do this record they'd actually worked on a, another album previously and uh, where she had sung one song on one of uh, Bob Wilbur's albums and so they decided to get together and do an out entire album together so worked out really well got another Maxine Sullivan album the Scott Hamilton Quintet. This one is just fantastic. Uh, she worked a lot with the Scott Hamilton Quintet in the 1980s. This recorded in 1985. I'm going to uh, include a link down there in the comments to a song where she's playing, ex uh, with a video where she's playing with this exact same band. Uh, Scott Hamilton on tenor sax, John Bunch on piano, Phil Flanagan on bass, Chris Flory on guitar, and Chuck Riggs on drums. And uh, the song they're doing on that video is not on here, but... Uh, yeah, the, uh, fantastic version of I Thought About You on here and Goody Goody. Um, yeah, lots of great songs. Drag Your Troubles and Dreams. So Maxine just has this really relaxed vocal style. It's so pleasant to listen to. She, she is just absolutely one of my favorite female jazz vocalists. So uh, let me uh, pause for just one second here. Okay, yeah, so the Vaporwave uh, was done. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was just going to show you this uh, Maxine Sullivan record, which is on Concord Jazz. So, really enjoying this one. I just like Maxine uh, so much. So, uh, that's pretty much it. I did get a couple of uh, seven inch singles when I went to the record store. I didn't really see any new releases that I really wanted uh, too much, but I did get a uh, couple singles so one of them is this one this is Jay Rafferty Baker Street what a fantastic song just sounds awesome on this uh, 45 RPM too so I was glad to get that one and then the other one uh, that I got is uh, Cool in the Gang Celebration so I did not have Celebration or any Cool in the Gang at all and uh, you know that song what a great song and uh, didn't really feel like I needed the whole Cool in the Gang album because that's the, really the main song I wanted to hear. So I was glad to find that one. And uh, yeah, on D Light Records, unfortunately, this one didn't come with the uh, sleeve, you know, for a D Light sleeve, I guess. But um, yeah, what a great song. Everybody likes Celebration, I think. Yeah, and uh, well, we're hearing Jeffrey J. Rafferty right now. So, um, so that's it. Those are the new uh, records and CDs I've gotten here in the past couple weeks. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think about those. Have you heard any of those? Or do you have any interest in hearing any of them? The Vaporwave, I think, is very interesting. Are you familiar with that uh, style of music? So, um, 
Yeah, and that's it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope everybody's having a great day.